in to the, her department, to the president of the university, uh, 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 urging that she saying that she was not a suitable person to promote because you can't believe the results of her research. In other words, they didn't believe it, so they don't think anyone else should believe it. Um, and there was a bomb threat at uh, uh, a daughter's wedding. Uh, at the University of Manitoba, there was a lecturer's contract not renewed, probably for a variety of reasons, but one of them was uh, showing equal rates of uh, male and female partner violence. My own experience, uh, I've had um, two graduate students warned uh, that they'll never get jobs if they do their PhD dissertation with me. Um, uh, I was prevented from speaking at the University of Massachusetts by hoots and stamps, and despite re repeated efforts, uh, they f finally adjourned the meeting. Um, I've been accused of wife beating, accused of sexually exploiting students. Uh, uh, and when I was president of the Society for the Study of Social Problems, uh, the first two rows of the uh, room in which I was to give the presidential address, when I stood up to give the presidential address, all the people in the first two rows stood up and walked out. Uh, and that presidential address, when it was published in the journal Social Problem, it's the, only, it's the only presidential address ever published in Social Problems where there were critiques following the presidential address. <laughs> and the critique, the article wasn't about partner violence. It was about spanking kids. But somehow, I, I had to be put down, is uh, what it amounts to. <laughs> well, uh, now, another part of this is biased media coverage. Media coverage is it's biased because it's influenced by what the, uh, the uh, um, reporter and the editor thinks will sell papers or increase viewers, and by their perception of partner violence as, for some of the reasons that I gave you before, as, as something perpetrated only by men. Uh, and so they often misrepresent. Here's an example, uh, f a study of all newspaper coverage of all homicides in Cincinnati, Ohio, from 1990 to 1998. And um, it, uh, it shows um, um, well, that, that's the, another slide. Sorry, this is this is just media coverage in general, showing the point of what's going to grab readers or viewers, and it shows this 473 percent increase in network coverage of homicides during a period 1990 to 98 when homicides declined by 33 percent. But then here's the Cincinnati study. Um, this is percent of homicides covered by Cincinnati newspapers um, uh, by sex of offender and victim. And uh, I think this reflects and reinforces the national misperception of partner violence as a male crime. Female kills male. Only half of them made it into the newspaper. Male kills female. 79% made it into the newspaper. And similar, there's also a big difference in the number of column inches devoted. Um, here's an article in the American Association of Retired People magazine um, uh, entitled, And Then He Hit Me. And uh, it's an article on partner violence among the elderly. Uh, it says, uh, and it says that, that the number of women on man incidents of domestic violence among the elderly is negligible. That's the exact quote, negligible. And to, 
And then they cite a night to show that they cite a 1988 study of elder abuse in Boston by my colleagues Carl Pillemer and David Finkelhor. So naturally, I knew about that study pretty well, um, and um, I knew it didn't show that. So I looked up the study again, and what the study does show is that 43% of physical violence cases were of the wife assaulting the husband. 17% were of the husband assaulting the wife. Now that lopsided ratio represents the physical capability differences in elderly people, since why, since husbands on the average are older um, and more will have a physical decline earlier quite a bit than, um, than wives. Um, so you look, look at these things and it's no wonder that uh, the public thinks it's a male crime. There's many other reasons um, that are in the article I, I mentioned that you can get from me. Now I want to stress that most press information results uh, from efforts to attract audiences, not deliberate bias, but it in a, has that effect. Um, they feature horrific cases of men who virtually enslave and torture female partners. Those stories sell newspapers and attract TV audiences. But such cases, in my opinion, I don't have exact statistics on it, are much less than half of 1% of partner violence cases, not of the population, but of that segment of the population that had an incidence of partner violence in the, in the previous 12 months. The public doesn't know this and therefore thinks that the typical case is a beaten down, physically injured, and virtually enslaved female victim. And naturally, we want to do something about that. These are the cases most in need of help, but they're a small percent of the total. On the other hand, although they're a small percent of the total, it's nevertheless a large number, even though not a large percentage. So let's say, to pick a figure out of the hat, of um, from the, our national surveys, two million uh, women severely assaulted a year, rounding that number to two million. And of cases that fit this uh, stereotypical description, it may be 50 to 100,000. That's a lot of cases, a lot of uh, women in dire circumstances that need help uh, and should have priority. But it's not, it's, it's atypical of what goes on in American households, even when there's severe violence, atypical of severe violence. Okay, let me turn now to the other denied uh, research, spanking kids. Um, and it's the most ignored cause of partner violence, uh, much more ignored than anything else I can think of. It's also the most widely prevalent cause of partner violence because over 90% of American parents spank toddlers. So it's a risk factor that affects 90% of the population, not 5, 10, or 20%. Therefore, it has tremendous implications for primary prevention. And spanking teaches violence to correct misbehavior, as illustrated in this slide. And then here's the results from uh, the 1975, and there's lots more, national survey showing that the more corporal punishment experienced, uh, the higher the probability of uh, assaulting a partner. When people hit a partner, you know, sometimes it's because they're mean, cruel, psychopatho have various kinds of psychopathology. But the overwhelming thing is to correct what the offender thinks of as misbehavior by the partner. Uh, and just fed up with it, finally lose it, and hit her, or hit him. That's the typical thing to, uh, the most partner violence is carried out to correct misbehavior, to coerce the partner into doing uh, something. And where do you learn hitting to correct misbehavior? You learn it at home, 
as a, as a toddler, an infant and toddler. Um, that's why I call spanking the primordial violence. Um, and another way of putting it is uh, that the f you know, violence like charity begins at home. Um, and here's a meta-analysis uh, by Elizabeth Gershoff, uh, published in Psych Bulletin uh, in 2002, uh, showing that corporal punishment has many other <coughs> harmful side effects, not just increasing the probability of hitting uh, a partner. Um, and the interesting thing about this is that there's almost complete agreement between the studies. Look at the harmful effects column. Um, less moral inter internalization. 15 studies, 87% agreement in them. 100% on agreement of studies that more corporal punishment leads to more physical aggression. Uh, delinquent and antisocial behavior of kids uh, and so forth. Uh, and then down here, the one I've circled, uh, adult abuse of own child or spouse. Uh, five studies there, all of them uh, agree. What else in child development has this overall, it's 93% agreement between studies. There's nothing else in child development where there is such complete agreement in the results of the research. But does anyone pay any attention to that? No. Um, uh, I reviewed, I've done this three times for three different five-year periods, uh, reviewed child development textbooks, 10 books each time. The latest one, uh, 2000 to 2005, uh, finds that, um, I thought I had that slide here. Um, oh, here it goes. Um, yep. Now, this is what I just told you, the 90% many studies, including three national surveys, um, well, two of them by me and my colleagues, but one that completely independently find over 90% of parents spank toddlers. There's almost complete agreement in the harm, showing harmful side effects. But 11 leading child development texts published in 2000 and 2005 Two thirds did not have an entry in the index of corporal punishment for corporal punishment, spanking, discipline, anything like that. So here's something that's part of the developmental experience of almost all American kids, and it's ignored, uh, in virtually ignored in these eleven books. This how much space on corporal punishment? One sentence to a maximum of four pages. They average less than half a page. If you know child development textbooks, they're big, thick, 500-page, often double column, uh, and uh, average of less than half a page. Only one of the 11 advised against using corporal punishment. Two suge suggested it's to be avoided if you can. The trouble is with a two-year-old, you soon come to the conclusion that you can't avoid it uh, because the recidivism rate for whatever you, uh, a two-year-old does, this is actual research on this, uh, it's 50% within two hours and 80% and 80, 80 within the same day. So after three or four repetitions, parents who say, yeah, I don't like to use corporal punishment, I, uh, I'm going to avoid it if I can, but after three or four repetitions, which is typical for a two-year-old, they decide they can't avoid it. Um, that for the sake of the child, bringing up a correct child, they, they have to do it. That's where parents who spank have the big advantage. Parents who spank are prepared to do it over and over and over and over again until the child gets it. And s the trouble is, parents who use things like alternative behave, uh, activities for the child, time out, um, uh, explaining things, uh, they give up and say, well, it didn't work after three or four times. But parents who spank F doesn't work after three or four times. They say, well, I guess they have to spank again. And they warn the child, do that again, and I'll spank you. You don't find parents saying, do that again, and I'll explain it again. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, mm. 
none of the, none of the, not a single one of those books advised never spanking. Not a single one, despite this overwhelming evidence. It's like advising in a textbook on family relationship, advising that slapping a wife is not a good idea, uh, but failing to say never slap uh, a partner. Whoops. So what are the implications um, uh, for treatment and prevention of recognizing what's been hidden or denied for 30 years? Well, there's three big denials that uh, we need to act on. One is the predominance of bidirectional partner violence. Second, the parallel causes for men and women. And third, that partner violence has a multiplicity of causes, not just one. You've heard this from other people, and you'll be hearing it more uh, as the conference goes. But those, those are what I think are the, the big three that are uh, uh, not just ignored, but often denied. So what are the treatment implications? Well, one is directionality. Who's doing it? That has to be determined prior to treatment, not assumed. The current assumption is that it's male to female. That's the default assumption. And if you're working uh, in many treatment contexts and you decide, well, you want to investigate that, you're likely to be penalized, at least ostracized, and maybe fired. Uh, because the claim is, well, these women are in such a fragile condition, and some are, uh, that we can't ask them if they did anything. Uh, and um, things proceed on the predetermined direction, as you heard this morning in that uh, gripping, horrible case example, uh, based on preconceptions of what it's like. So the first Im implication is that before treatment, one has to establish who is doing the hitting? To what extent is it bidirectional, which is going to be the predominant situation? To what extent is it male only? To what extent is it female only? And the intervention needs to take that into account. Um, second, uh, on causes, we need to replace the single cause patriarchal system model with a multi-cause model which recognizes the prevalence of psychological and social problems of both partners. Uh, I've, I've contributed to this problem between because, as was pointed out by one of you uh, this morning, in a, uh, uh, I think it was in Behind Closed Doors, I stated that um, only about 10% of partner violence involves some psychopathology on the part of um, the violent person. That's true, but that's for all partner violence, most of which is the minor uh, throwing a plate of spaghetti at the partner and things, things like that. Um, if you take the severe um, chronic injury and domination kind of partner violence, in those cases, the research shows that Severe psychological problems, well, psychological problems of varying levels of severity uh, are very frequent. Um, so uh, I sh should have qualified that statement in, in that book. Um, and I've learned better now, as you've just heard. <laughs> um, uh, and then openness to a variety of new approaches. For example, restorative justice that you heard about from Linda Bills this morning. Uh, and rather than treating um, uh, anger management as some uh, subversive attempt to hide the, the problem of uh, patriarchy, to embrace it as that as one of the many possibilities, depending on the initial diagnosis of the case and the risk factors involved. So that's treatment. What about prevention? Well, I think we need to direct efforts, prevention efforts, to women and girls as well as to men and boys. So when you see these posters, such as Linda had up, uh, 
this morning, uh, it should show a female figure as well as a male figure as a potential offender, not just men as the potential offenders. Um, and in my opinion, the main focus needs to be on relationship skills. Uh, um, as committed as I am to having us achieve a more gender equal world, um, taking this immediate problem, it's, I think, primarily a problem of lack of relationship skills in the general population of uh, partner violence and psychological problems in the case of the sev chronic severe um, uh, type. And then lastly, never spank a child, never under any circumstances. Um, because that, in my opinion, is the primordial violence. Even murders reflect this. In the United States, this has now been true for f uh, almost 50 years of data being reported on it. The predominant, uh, almost all murders, 70% of murders are carried out as part of an interpersonal conflict. They're not like this horrible thing that just happened in um, uh, Illinois. Um, they are part of interpersonal conflict. They're carried out to correct the misbehavior of the person murdered. Um, and that, that's shown not only in the U.S. national crime statistics, but in in-depth studies of homicides, that the predominant motive is correcting misbehavior. Sometimes crazy misbehavior, tiny ones. One that caught me, I'll never forget, was um, two guys that uh, rented an apartment together. One smoked and the other didn't, but they had agreed there's going to be no smoking. Guess what happened? The smoker smoked. And they got into an argument about it, and the argument developed into a fist fight, and then one of them happened to have a gun. Bango. That was a murder. Uh, correcting the misbehavior, smoking. Uh, we didn't smoke anymore, no. <laughs> uh, so that's, as I say, 70% of all homicides. So to conclude, I say it's time to make the effort to end all family violence, not just violence against female partners. That means starts with ending spanking, the cradle of violence, and ending the supposedly harmless violence by women. It's true the injury rate is much uh, lower, but it's not harmless, especially for women. As Linda pointed out this morning, it sets in motion a train of events that's going to lead to her being a victim uh, if she persists. Um, these are basic steps if women, as well as all other human beings, are to be safe in their own homes.